Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, this is Redberry Wheel here and welcome back to another video. But in today's video, it's going to be a little bit different. I was given the suggestion that I start doing more content that features members of the Civil Air Patrol community, where we can like shine a highlight on people's accomplishments, their experience, and just give, give people a chance to just chat about cap stuff with me. And I'm, I'm super duper excited for this series, and my goal is to get one member at least from every single wing interviewed at least once on this channel. We, we've got one checked off right now, you're about to see the footage from that, and I had a fantastic conversation with uh, Cadet Captain McDaniel, so you guys will get a chance to see that. But I just want to say that if you or someone you know might be interested in getting involved, then please email me at redberryweobusiness at gmail.com. I'll include a link in the description. It's also in the info tab on my channel. If you are a cadet, you are welcome to do it. You just need to make sure a senior member or a trusted adult is CC'd on those emails for cadet protection policy purposes. And if you are a senior member, then you do not need to. So. I'm going to go ahead and get started with this video. So just reminder, redberrywheelbusiness at gmail.com for potential collaboration. So thank you, and I hope you enjoy the video. So I'm going to say welcome, everyone, to a wonderful video. We've got Cadet Captain McDaniel from Minnesota Wing. Um, this is the first time that we're doing something like this, so I'm very excited to have you on my first episode. And since, since you are my, my first cap friend on, on the channel to do this, you're going to help me name this series. So what, what should we name this series? Cap Friends Hangout? Cap Friends Hangout. <laughs> well, well, let's see here. So we, we could come up with a, a few different catchy names. We could brainstorm a few here. And then when people watch the video, they can, they can pick their favorites or post suggestions in the comments. Does that work? Okay, perfect. So you said Cap Friends Hangout? Yeah. Okay. We could do... CAP Across the World. No, that's too cheesy. Mm. Where, where in the world in CAP? Maybe Cap Friends Across America? But there are some international ones. Like, I know there's a few squadrons in Germany, and Japan, a few other locations. And if- of, Yes. also one from Germany that's in Civil Air Patrol. Oh, we need to get them on then! Although I don't have her contact information, sadly. But how do you know this person if, if, you, if you know of them being in Germany then? Like, how does that work? National activity. Ah, uh, okay. Very cool. It we 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 came up with a few people in the comments that you can you can add your thoughts in and make it fantastic and wonderful, spice it up a little bit. But I think we, we could definitely have a nice little series where just anyone can just hop on, have a quick chat, talk about cap stuff, talk about experiences and awesome things. You had mentioned you have done encampments and NCSAs. Done um, two encampments would have done Mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, yeah, I've been actually to NCSAs. I've been to Cyber Defense Training Academy, which was in Lathland Air Force Base. Oh, nice. Um, we learned cybersecurity, so, and got instruction from the Air Force, so that was cool. It, was it, at, like, Air Force NCOs and officers came in as instructors in addition to senior members, or was it primarily Air Force personnel? So, it was kind of like a cross, like, um, Basically, our instructors, at least for the um, cyberspace familiarization course. Okay. I have a handful to say that. Yeah. <laughs> um, but anyway, yeah, so it was kind of our instructors for the basic course was um, people in the Air Force, so a lot of them was like NCOs. Um, we had actually like one um, officer that actually was a second lieutenant, but got promoted to first lieutenant oh, nice. in the Air Force, so that was. Uh, to see him like a second lieutenant like all week and then like uh, one day he just became a 
His time came! He moved up in the world! <laughs> yeah, that's what I was doing. And, yeah, so, and then a lot of, like, the people in charge of the whole activity, um, was, you know, a lot of just the civil rights of people, um, yeah. So, like, if we weren't in class, it was just mainly, um, you know, senior members, cadet staff, things like that. So, mm-hmm. So does that mean you do Cyber Patriot? I actually do. Um, oh, nice. I've done it um, seven times. Um, seven? For seven, yeah, seven seasons. But wow. But as a competitor, yeah. Um, this past year, it no, was my seventh time. Um, and so I got to uh, be a mentor, which is definitely different. Um, <laughs> but a cool experience. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I'll be doing Cyber Patriot again. <laughs> so does that mean you serve as an instructor and and you, you help people who are brand new to the activity um right now i basically help teach uh, classes as a mentor um also if like technical difficulties come up during competition i can help with those which is good which is you know fun and exciting so, mm-hmm. um, yeah and actually an interesting fact because of Cyber Patriot, I do want to go into cybersecurity um, for a job. So. Oh, nice. Active duty military or civilian? Just civilian. I okay. Military, but, you know, that's okay. Cool. It's <laughs> about cab. Because, of mm-hmm. course, you go into the military, but also do. It has a great background for that, which is I think, cool. Yeah, definitely. So would you say that the cyber component in Civil Air Patrol is one of the highlights for you, or is there something else that you have, like, seen as, like, one of your favorite things about the program? You know, I think Cyber Patriot's kind of just, like, a side program, kind of, of Civil Air Patrol. Like, it's not an actual mission of CEP, but out of all, like, the missions of CEP, my, you know, I kind of have a toss-up between cadet programs and emergency services. Um, the reason I say that is because if it wasn't for cadet programs, I wouldn't be the leader that I am today. But also with ES, you know, I guess that also emergency services helps a lot too with um, leadership as well. But, you know, it's kind of cool that, like, you can help people just, you know, serving on emergency services. The qualifications you can get is pretty rewarding. Definitely. Um, and then knowing that the training you've got, you can use your training to teach others, um, which I am actually the emergency services officer for a squadron. Oh, good. <laughs> yeah. So, so with with COVID stuff going on right now, how are you guys training for ES? Right now, um, Minnesota Wing is in phase two. Um, we've, uh, we went, you know, back when, like, in March, we're phase zero. Um, phase one happened around May, June-ish, um, I think it was June, yeah, June we got to phase one, mm-hmm. and then July we got to phase two, um, so phase one, what we did, or phase zero, we just had, like, uh, virtual classes for emergency services that I know I could sign people off with, because okay. there are some classwork needed for emergency services. Definitely. And so, um, it was just a perfect time to use that or when we were in phase zero it was a perfect time to get all that classwork done you know um like because if you look at like the ground team three tasks there's some you know like um exercise universal precautions i mean you can use, that's just a class in itself there so you can teach on you know that that's needed as a prerequisite you know uh so that's kind of how we did it in phase zero, and then phase one, we did, um, weekends, like, um, you know, we did actually three times a week ES training. Granted, I had other people helping me teach, I was not there at three times. Wow. <laughs> um, so, uh, basically I had one person deal with the mission radio operator training, one person do with the ground team training, mm-hmm. um, and then one, and then I actually did the flight line training, um, so we'd use that to, um, and we'd have them all on separate days. Like, so our ground team training happened on a Wednesday, and then um, our mission radio operator happened maybe on, you know, Friday or something, and then our flight line training happened on a Saturday. Okay. And they'd go two hours, yeah. And they'd each go two hours long, because that's how long we could go in phase one. 
um, with being in person. So that's kind of how we did it, and we were able to use that training to get a lot of people. You know, did back. Did you do most of it outside, so that you didn't have to clean everything, or? Yeah. Okay. Everything outside as much as possible, and still do. So. And then uh, phase two for ES, we had actually. How my squadron does it is like our first and third meetings are virtual, um, so yeah, that's kind of nice. Hmm. Um, and then our second with our second Tuesday, which is our PT night, um, which is all outside, and then our fourth Tuesday, which is ES training, we try and do outside work. Um, and we, with our ES training, we try and help with uh, um, not doing uh, or having less contact. So like. We're probably staying away from right now practicing ELT searches just because you know you're handing around the DF or you know we don't want to get people you know sick so we've been doing you know that uh, but yeah so it's kind of cool how we are adapting you know? mm-hmm, definitely uh, but yeah the able to still get awesome training that needs to be done I know that some people found it to be challenging to, like, teach drill and ceremonies virtually, because it's like, how do you tell someone how to do an about face without, like, showing them and then being like, this is what you do with your feet, and then they just, like, start to trip over themselves, and then you actually, like, have to show them again and be like, slow down and do this thing. Um, So I know that it's been a little bit of a challenge for some of the members that I've spoken to previously, and, like, doing ES stuff too we we haven't had a chance to yet with my unit personally because like we just haven't had a location to meet at and the the wing recently moved into phase two and there's a very long approval process and it (laughs) it takes some time to to get the wing to be like yes it's okay for you to do your activity and because my unit was previously meeting at a school if we wanted to use the school it was closed or it it is closed right now so people can't go inside to go to the bathroom and we have to limit the amount of time we're meeting for because like there's nowhere to go (laughs) which which is a little bit frustrating but we're we're starting to get into having like drill and ceremonies and pt testing in person at least we also like since pt doesn't take the whole time for us we usually have like we usually use that time for drill just because, you know, everyone's rusty at it just because, you know, we've been virtual for so long. Oh, know? yeah. So, what is your favorite cap memory? This is a hard one because, I mean, yeah, you would have so many memories. Well, um, maybe pick one, one or two that are, like, up, up there for you. They don't have to necessarily be your favorite per se. But one, one that means something to you or, like, is super-duper memorable, whether it's, like, great or not so great. If you want to go funny, one that's in my head right now is so, uh, for, so, I went to Blue Beret, and anyway, um, this was, like, before operational week, and this was kind of during training week, also exploring just a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, going to the EA Museum, and, like, so... My flight kind of split off um, just because um, we had females, females, we just had a split, of, split off. And my flight commander, who's a spots cadet, or was a spots cadet at the time, uh, our cadet colonel, he went with us, who's a, our flight commander. Then our flight leader, who was a cadet lieutenant colonel, he took the other um, people. And so, anyway, what was really funny is kind of in the kid part of the EA Museum. <laughs> We had, oh, there's, like, this thing that, like, blows air, and you can have, like, a ball on it. Oh, yeah. (laughs) Oh, no. (laughs) Anyway, so what's so funny is, oh, we decided to put our covers. No. (laughs) Oh, no. So it's just, like, floating there with the ball? Or, like, the ball, or they would just, like, fly off? Time, but anyway, <laughs> so we show up on shore with my commander, and I was <laughs> paying attention, and all of us females were, you know, anyway, so <laughs> they put the cover. <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. You're good. Okay, they put the cover in front of the thing that blows air, 
And so I actually pushed the part that turns it on, and it was also in a black commander's face. And so cover blue in front of his face, and it was so funny. Oh my. <laughs> Okay, so I'm so I'm imagining the little tube thing with the cover, and you push the button, and it almost flew into his face. Okay, that that's great. Oh man, I I, I feel like if if you knew the person, like if if I knew that the person and like the different flight members, then it would probably be a little bit funnier for me. But being able to have such a memorable experience, it's just like when you're chilling out, you're going to a museum, and then just like one small thing happens, and it becomes a light bulb memory where it's like ingrained in your memory forever that those are golden yeah exactly oh now that i know that we're talking another favorite memory i have is actually um talking with uh, john Rose smith for a while so, wow yeah like so it was the day everyone was going home to um you know from blueberry and so he decided to stay back and actually my dad's a pilot and so um i was waiting for my dad to come pick me up um at oshkosh and so because we were um or because the national commander stayed back and i was kind of leaving later than like everyone else because everyone else like they had to go at like the buses were leaving at four or five in the morning to get to to go to milwaukee or mm-hmm. and so it was like really cool experience you know get to talk to general smith in case you don't know he is a funny um person if he he yeah, so he can be pretty funny and then um also you can learn just a lot from visiting um, it's just a great experience really? i i've had the opportunity to meet him a few times um nice. like at, at one of the national conferences i i went to the one in anaheim and I was being presented an award then. So I was like, hey, this is really cool. And he was like, hey, it's very nice to meet you, ma'am. And I was like, oh, this is so cool. And then when I had my spots presented, I got to meet him and General Goldfein at the Spots Association dinner, which was just like mind blowing. Cause I was like, oh my gosh, there's like seven stars right here next to me. Hello, hello, gentlemen. And I didn't, I didn't get to chat with them much at that point because they were both very busy, but they, they're both very nice gentlemen, and they definitely care about Civil Air Patrol and the Air Force, which was really cool to see. Actually, when I was visiting with General Smith, we were actually helping clean the, the um, building or the facilities, just, like, basically people stay back got to help. Um, mm-hmm. And also, Blue Beret is all about servant leadership, and, you know, it was really cool to see General Smith helping with, um, you know, uh, cleaning, whether that was, like, sweeping or wiping tables down, and so it was really cool, you know, to see that. It doesn't matter what rank or position you hold, you know, everyone needs to do their part in helping, you know, and it's, like, really cool, so. Yeah, that, that reminds me of one of those leadership lessons where it's, like, you shouldn't delegate to someone else what you wouldn't be willing to do like if if you aren't willing to help clean up the bathroom or if you aren't willing to help wipe up this mess then you shouldn't be making other people do it because that's just not a very nice thing to do and you're not like better or higher up than other people are so that's definitely a really humble kind of action where you're willing to just like take your rank off leave your grade at the door and be like okay i'm here to help i'm here to serve so that's that's really awesome so then after cleaning, I was actually able to visit with him a couple hours, like, yeah, wow, like two hours or so. Yeah, I got to visit with him you know, a couple hours. I mean, there was people other, doing other things, but yeah, I got to, it was really cool to visit, you know. Um, so that's why going to activities is awesome because you make it to be important people. Mm-hmm, definitely. Did you learn any sage words of wisdom in your two-hour discussion with General Smith? talking be like oh you're so high you're amazing don't you know necessarily do that i didn't do that but it was just like you know they don't like being put on a high pedestal usually they just like to be able to you know see someone's true 
yourself, you know. So I guess when talking to just someone in general, even if they're high or a celebrity, you know, talk to them, you know, as if you were talking to your friend kind of thing. But if there was, like, one or two things maybe that, like, stuck out what he was saying or something that you discussed that was really, like, a highlight for you? Anything like that, maybe? I guess the whole even seeing him to me was very, you know, that was probably one of my more awesome highlights, probably, was, um, with that, um, but I guess something kind of funny, so I could tell where my dad was at, um, because, um, my dad has this, like, GPS in his airplane called the Spot. Mm-hmm. And anyway, so then, it, like, every 15 minutes, it broadcasts to, like, a website and stuff. And so, I, uh, you know, I show General Smith, you know, hey, I can see where my dad's at, you know? And this was kind of before ADSB was all required, um, yeah. even though this was just two years ago, um, ADSP was just required just this, this year. year. Yeah. Yeah. And so, anyway, um, it was, you know, really cool that I could, you know, see my dad and I could, um, on this website. And I also, like I said, I showed General Smith, and sometimes he'd else ask me, hey, where's your dad at? Where's your dad? <laughs> Aww. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, um, as we went on, um, got to see my dad's, you know, airplane and stuff, which, it's actually a Cessna Cardinal. Oh, that nice. Dad owns. Yeah, so, it's basically a Cessna uh, that has um, no struts, um, but it is a tricycle gear. And anyway, I showed him the uh, GPS, and anyway, I showed, oh, there's the SOS button, and he goes, push it, and I'm like, no. <gasps> no! <laughs> <laughs> oh. So, yeah, that's a funny story with I'm glad you had a positive experience with him when he was there at Oshkosh. Because not, not a lot of people had the opportunity to do such a thing, I think. Probably one of the most awesome, you know, experiences is, um, he, while we were talking and visiting, I actually got to hear his story. And, um, anyway, growing up, he lived in California, but where he was at is kind of like de- more deserty. There wasn't much happening there, or, or I should say there isn't much there. And anyway, um, so he wanted to go into the Air Force Academy, and, um, he ended up, um, you know, um, you know, was able to talk to, like, one of his, uh, um, I think teachers or something, or anyway, someone that works at the school he goes to, um, that helped with, like, um, I don't know. The application process? Yeah, something like that with the Air Force Academy, and with that, he was able to go into, like, he figured out he got into the Air Force Academy, and so it was, you know, really cool, um, you know, that his whole story, and that's just amazing how you can live in a place that, you know, doesn't have much, but yet you can still find, you know, a lot of things around, you know, um, or you can get, if you have a dream, that you can get there, you know. Um, so I just find that, you know, really cool how, you know, General Smith had this dream to um, go into the Air Force Academy, which he actually did go into the Air Force Academy and graduated. Um, and, you know, it's just amazing, I think. Oh, yeah. definitely. Just being able to aspire to achieve your dreams I think is a great example with him being able to go to the Air Force Academy and be so actively involved with the Air Force and now serves as as the national commander because he wasn't super involved with CAP for as long as I had originally thought like I I thought he was in for a long time but he he was in since like the early 2000s or something like that and some national commanders are like they joined when they were a cadet and they went through the entire program and they're like now I'm the national commander I'm here now I got my spot some spots number 100 or something like like I I think it's really cool that no matter what background you're from you can achieve stuff in civil air patrol which which is something that not all organizations have available to everyone so uh or is 29 Anyway, 
It was the very end of the month. And anyway, he said that he had been in for 13 years, so probably um, counting to 2020, he's probably been in for 15 years. Which, you know, it's like, wow, you've been in that long and you've got to, like, pass your computer? You know, that's amazing, you know? So, mm -hmm. but yeah. Cool. Yeah. That's so exciting. I'm, I'm glad you had a chance to talk to him. Not, not a lot of people do, so you hold on to that memory now. Oh, yes, yes. So, so does that mean you are pursuing your pilot, or private pilot certificate, you've already gotten it, or, like, you said your dad's a pilot, right? And you went to Oshkosh, she helped at the air show. So does that mean you've, like, received any flight scholarships or anything like that, or flying isn't quite your cup of tea? trying to pursue it and I mean I have a great squadron you know great instructors you know my squadron so it's helpful but I just I think you know between like my dad you know pushing me you know which is fine and all um I just I figured out you know flying isn't really you know my thing like as in like piloting the aircraft but I do love riding in them okay um, yeah so Anytime that, like, if I get asked, hey, do you want to go flying? Like, yeah, let's go. Like, I love it. So, but I'm not really wanting to pursue my pilot's license. Okay, that's fair. But, however, a new thing I am wanting to pursue is get my commercial drone license. Oh. I'm wanting to pursue that. So, Ooh. yeah. Hopefully I'll be getting that soon. So, yeah. Have you looked into maybe doing air crew? Because you're oh. over 18 now? Yeah, I've actually, I actually have air crew, some air crew qualifications. Okay. So yeah, actually just recently I got my observer rating. Yay! <laughs> and actually last year I got my mission scanner. Good. Um, yeah, it was really awesome, so. Not a lot of cadets take advantage of it because mo most cadets that I, not all of them, but a lot of cadets that I've met, they... Like, as soon as they graduate or as soon as they hit 18, they're like, you know what, CAP's not really my thing anymore. But a lot of opportunities open up when you turn 18, especially with ES, with doing air crew and doing ground team leader. Yes, exactly. Like, it's, it's fun, and you can do more stuff. And you still get to be called a cadet, so you can do scholarships and NCSAs. You can do IAs, because you're older. Like... It makes sense to stay in and just, like, do stuff, even if you're in college. Yeah. And actually, I do, since I love civil air patrol so much, and I see a lot of awkward, awesome opportunities, even as a senior member. Uh, so when I turn 21, I plan to be a senior member as well in civil air patrol. I don't plan to just drop out, you know, of the program. But, you know, it, you know, everyone has different interests as, you know, they get older, but, you know, it's just, it's kind of a cool that, you know, you can be in Civil Air Patrol as long as you want. <laughs> yes. Uh, and, like, it just, it never ends, you know, the opportunities that come. That is all for this video. We're going to have a part two, right? Captain McDaniel, we're gonna have a part two. Yeah, so look forward for that video. Thank you so much guys, and we'll see you in the next one Bye-bye Yay <laughs>